We're going to be looking at how to solve nonlinear inequalities. These are just more complex inequalities than we've done in the past. Here we have x plus 3 times x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. The important thing to note here is that all positive numbers are bigger than 0 and all negative numbers are less than 0. So since we want to be greater than 0, we want to find out where these numbers are going to be positive. And how we do that is we kind of set ourselves up with a little number line in a chart. Here on the left, let's go ahead and put what our factors are, x plus 3 and x minus 9. And then right down here, let's give ourselves a nice number line here. And on this number line, we want to put the points uh, that are going to make these zeros. So we want to find our zeros and put those zeros right here on the number line. Here we have x plus 3. That zero is going to be at negative 3. And then here we have x minus 9. That zero is going to be at a positive 9 somewhere over here. So right above my number line, I'm going to go ahead and make a little chart here just to help myself stay organized. Now looking at my x plus 3, that is a 0 of negative 3, which means to the right of that 0, all these values are going to be positive. So this will be positive, this will be positive. For example, if we plugged in, let's say, a number in here like 0, that would be 0 plus 3, which is positive. Uh, we could plug in 9, 9 plus 3 is positive, 20 plus 3 is positive 23. Everything to the right of the zero will be positive. To the left, like negative four, negative four plus three would be negative. Everything to the left of that zero will be negative. Let's take a look at x minus nine. We know the zero for x minus nine is at nine, so to the right, everything's gonna be positive, and to the left, everything's gonna be negative. This will be negative and this will be negative. For example, if we plugged in 0, that would be 0 minus 9, that's negative 9, that's negative. Uh, you can plug in as many points as you want, but an easy way and quick way to do it is wherever your 0 is, to the right is going to be positive, to the left is going to be negative. So for all numbers left of negative 3, we're going to have x mi plus 3 is a negative, so this would be negative, and we have x minus 9, and that would also be a negative. For example, if we plugged in negative 20, we'd get up here negative uh, 17 times negative 29. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those because we don't really need them. But um, now looking down, looking down here, uh, everything to the left of this negative 3, this is going to be a negative times a negative. Overall, this is going to be a positive, which remember, we want all positives because we are looking for greater than or equal to zero. In between negative three and nine, we're gonna have a positive for x plus three, a negative for x minus nine, so overall, that's gonna be a negative. Now, we don't want a negative because we're looking for what is greater than zero. Over here to the right of nine, like 10, 11, 12, etc., etc., x plus three will be positive, x minus nine will be positive, so a positive times a positive will be a positive, Again, that's going to be included because we're greater than zero. All right, finally, if we want to write our solution, since we, we're looking for everything bigger than zero, we know we're looking for our positive intervals. This is going to be everything from negative infinity to negative three. I'm not going to include the three because there's no equal to sign under here. Union with everything from nine to positive infinity. Let's do one more really quickly. Here we have x times x plus 2 divided by x minus 5 is less than or equal to 0. So to start, I'm going to separate each of my factors into a little chart here. I have x, x plus 2, x minus 5. I'm going to draw my fancy number line down here. And I'm going to mark my zeros. This x has a 0 at 0, of course. So that's 1. Uh, for this x plus 2, we have a 0 at negative 2. I'll put my negative 2, 0 there. And my last one, I have x minus 5. My 0 is going to be at a positive 5. Remember, for this x, everything to the right of the 0 is going to be positive. That's going to be positive here, positive here. Left is going to be negative, negative. My x plus 2 has a 0 of negative 2. Anything to the right of that will be positive. 
Anything to the left will be negative. And for my x minus 5, I got a 0, 5. To the right, again, will be positive. To the left will be negative. Okay. Now let's find out what my overall values here. For left of negative 2, I've got negative times a negative is positive. Times a negative again is negative. So overall down here is negative. Here, in between negative 2 and 0, we have negative times a positive is negative. Times a negative is positive. Overall, we're positive. Here we've got positive times a positive. That's a positive. Times a negative is a negative right here. And we've got a positive, positive, positive. Of course, that's going to be a positive. What values are we looking for? The ones less than or equal to 0. So since we're less than 0, we're looking for an overall of a negative that we know is here and here. So let's go ahead and write our interval for all values that solve this inequality. Uh, first, we'll go from negative infinity, negative infinity all the way to negative 2. It's going to be negative infinity all the way to negative 2. And I'm going to put a bracket here because I'm less than or equal to. So since I'm less than or equal to, I'm going to put a bracket. Let's union that with, again, let's go ahead and do a bracket from 0 all the way. I'm looking at the center over here, 0 to 5. And this 5 would have a bracket, except it makes the denominator here uh, 0. And that is not in the domain. That is going to give us an error. So uh, instead of a bracket, we're just going to put a parenthesis. And here's my solution to this inequality.